And what actually happens is it copies the data from the read-only database into my Envisage read-write database. You notice now certain things have come have gone bold. It's had to um, the actual folders, the socket head folder and the bolts folder, have now gone bold to show that a copy has been put into my read-write library and uh, in, has been put into my read-write library. And also further down or further up, we should see there we are in bold now an 8.88 cap head bolt. The reason why this is in bold is it's editable. It's actually been copied into the into my read-write database. Everything else is grayed out because it's read-only. That's the way it works here. To do any work on this now, we must change to the Envisage view. And here we can see the bolt. You, it's important to be in here if you want to edit it. It's very, very important if you want to delete that family later. It will only let you do it if you're actually looking at that read-write content center library. You're then able to delete. You won't see that if you're in the merged view, for instance. Okay, so let's edit this. If we'll right click on it and go to the family table, what it will give me is a spreadsheet of all the sizes that are available, all the standard sizes for this fastener. So when we actually choose a fastener from the content center, it looks up this table and gets all the various sizes or parameters from this table and builds you a fastener on the fly. How does it find, uh, choose the material, well, it's actually listed here in the material column. How does it know what file name or part number it is? Well, it's listed in this column, all these columns. And we can edit these. So, for instance, if I want to change the material to mild steel, I just right-click on the material column, change the properties, and choose a new material. That places it in the, in the material expression here, in the, in, the, in the line for the material. Click on OK. Changes all the um, material column to whatever material we choose. These can be changed individually, should you wish. It's highly unlikely that you can do this. Next, I tend to change the part number next. All right? We want a good, we want a decent part number. It could be your internal part numbering scheme you use. It might just be that you want to get rid of the ISO 4762 in this case and give it a more meaningful uh, part number that uh, somebody in stores can pick up from. Then again, all we do is we right-click on the part number, change its column properties, and you'll see these hieroglyphics on the expression line. What it's actually doing is building up a part number from some text, but also with the nominal diameter in and the nominal length in. So that's what these parameters are. You can pick up extra parameters from this parameter list on the right. We tend to just use nominal diameter and length or for nuts, obviously, and washers, just the nominal diameter. What I'm going to do here is just ch is purely change the text to 8.8. Cat head. Um, steel bolt or whatever but it will be followed by the nominal diameter and the length. If I now click on OK, that will now change the column so that the part number now reads 8.8 .8 cap head and then followed by the M, whatever size, by the length. So a more meaningful part number. Now, of course, that's the part number itself. The file name is all um, as the old uh, text as well, and it would be handy to change this. A very quick way of changing the file name is go to its properties, get rid of all this lot, go to the expression or the parameter finder on the right hand side, and all the way down the bottom you'll see part number. So if you put that in, all that's going to do is put the part number into the file name. And lo and behold, you've actually got the same name for the file name as you have for the part number. So that's very quickly changed the material, the part number and the file name for this particular fastener. Next, we may want to take certain sizes out. It's not good practice to delete. What you should consider doing, uh, let's just apply this first so that it updates all the part numbers and so on. Okay, let's check that. There we go, we've got all our mild steel. The part numbers are correct and the file names are correct. So let's say we're not going to use 1.6 nominal diameter fasteners, then all we've got to do is select those using the shift key. Right mouse click 
and don't delete these, but suppress. The idea is, of course, that they are just turned off. They're still in there, so that should you wish to um, change, uh, put these back on again later, you can do by unsuppressing them. We'll apply that. The other question I have quite a lot is, well, okay, we use a non-standard fastener, but it's not in the list. So let's take, for instance, the M10 fastener, um, and I'm going to change, I'm going to add uh, the longest length you can get for this is under 100 millimeter. So say I want to uh, design or use a 110 mil long uh, bolt, and all I've got to do is add a row, and then copy and paste one row into it. The yellow one is the new line I've selected or created. And then just in here, just put in the new size, 110. And if we go across to the right hand side, the part the file name and the part number is updated automatically. Click on apply and that now gives us a new line for our fastener, 110. M ten, hundred and ten mil long. So you can put your own uh, rows in here as well, should you wish. If you want to, you can actually edit via a spreadsheet. There's, in the top left-hand corner, you've got edit via spreadsheet. So if you want to very quickly, using spreadsheet technology, put in your own part numbers, you can do. Because you may have sequential part numbers or something like that. It might be easier in an Excel spreadsheet. So we've now edited our, our fastener. If you click on OK on that. We now have, in our content center library, a fastener. We can, by the way, create our own categories, so you can create your own folders in the um, content center list, should you wish. I tend to just leave them alone, put them in the same folder, um, but just create my own fasteners in exactly the same folder as they came from. So now I've got an 8.8 .8 cap head bolt. It means if I, if I want um, a 12.9 cap head bolt, then all I've got to do is save that as another family, and lo and behold, I've then got another fastener, and then I can go and edit that and change the part numbers and the materials and so on as before. Now joining. Okay, so okay. If, this, if this works, all we do is start ourselves a new assembly, place some content center, and lo and behold, up the top here, our 8.8 .8 cap head bolt. So I'll just place that in my assembly, choose a the size, there's my 110 that I added earlier. As you can see, it's now used the family name, which I put in as 8.8 .8 cap head bolt, and then it just puts uh, the size in afterwards um, as you place this into the uh, assembly on the left hand side here in the browser. If we have a look at the bit of materials, Part number is as I put it in the, um, as I created it in the uh, content center editor earlier. The description is coming through as the family name. But of course, the description I could change exactly the same method when I, if I edit the column in the content center editor, I can actually put a size in, in the description as well, should I wish. So that's an overview of the. Um, Content Center and how we edit it. Um, once you've got your own company Content Center, then all you need to do really is to turn off access to the read-only Content Center libraries. In the Vault Data Manager console, all you need to do is log into that on the server, and under Libraries, just detach the read-only libraries that you don't want to use. Just use detach. It will detach it out. Nobody's then got access to that. They've only got access to the read-write libraries. Alternatively, if you're working in the um, desktop content, then all you do is go to projects, bottom right-hand corner, the configure content center libraries button. And in here, you just tick or untick what uh, libraries you don't want to have access to. I've only got access to the Envisage Read Write Library now. Everything else now is not available. OK on that. Save it. And then you haven't got access to those read-only contents. Um, it's as simple as that. That is project specific, so be careful. This has to be done on all the projects. 
Or alternatively, out of this folder here, just delete the files out of there that you don't want to use again. Simple as that. Or move them somewhere else or rename them. And all that you, the only files you want to keep in there are the ones that are, say, Envisage in this case. There'll be two files called Envisage. Leave them in there. Simple as that. So that's how we edit and create our own custom content for, our, for companies, our company-specific content. Um, later in the year, we'll be looking at how we publish our own content into the Content Center. Um, look out on your emails for other webcasts that we're doing throughout the year. And thank you very much for your time. Now and leaving. Have a good weekend. Thank you very much. Now leaving. Alan Nerden. Dave Whiteley. Oliver. Richard Brown. Chris Pack. David.